On the 6th of August 1962, Jamaica gained its independence from the United Kingdom, and it was the first time when the national flag of Jamaica was unfurled and hoisted. As we're celebrating the independence this week, I thought it was a perfect time to post this episode and highlight the full story of a Jamaican flag. But as you know with this channel, it's never that simple. I begin asking questions like, why does every country have a flag? No, really, why? Why not just use a plate with the name of the country? What is more, each country usually has many flags. For example, in Jamaica, I have counted 26 official flags. And I'm not talking about historical ones, just the flags in use today. So with this episode to celebrate the Independence Day, we shall look at the national flag of Jamaica, 25 secret flags of Jamaica, and a full story behind them all. What if you wanted to draw a picture of a country? How would you do that? Sure, you can try to draw a map, but good luck with that. Or you can just write the name of the country. But more often than not, we will make a little flag. In fact, the flag itself and its colors have become synonymous with each country to the extent that we don't even see these colors anymore, but rather we see this pattern and go, okay, this is Jamaica, this is the USA, this is Canada, and so on. But who was the person or a country to come up with this idea and why? A national flag is a piece of cloth displaying the insignia of a sovereign state. Having a country flag may be an obvious thing now, but for a long time it wasn't. There isn't really one particular point in time or even one place where the idea was developed. But what is known for sure is that flags were originally used for military purposes as the identification of a friend or an enemy. They were also used for signaling and as signs of victory or defeat. The study of flags is known as vexillology, from the Latin word vexillum, meaning flag or banner. This is what it looks like in the Roman Empire, and it was one of the standards of Roman army. But the actual flags recognizable as such were almost certainly the invention of ancient peoples of the Indian subcontinent and on the land that is now known as China. It is said that the founder of the Zhou dynasty in China had a white flag carried before him, but there were other flags that included the images of birds, tigers and dragons. The fall of the flag meant defeat, and this is one of the main reasons why a national flag should never be thrown on the ground. Flags had equal importance in ancient India, being carried on chariots and elephants. The flag was the first object of attack in battle, and its fall would also mean defeat. Indian flags were often triangular in shape and have a gold fringe. Flags were probably transmitted to Europe and Africa by Arabs in early Middle Ages during the rise of Islam. You see, before Islam, communities all across the world, from tribes to empires, had some kind of symbols to represent themselves, but they would be rather complicated, like statues and pictures depicting humans or animals and plants. According to early Islam history written by Arabs themselves, they borrowed the idea of a flag from India. But because Islam prohibits the use of any images, they ended up simply using plain black or white or red or green. This simplification made it so much easier to identify a flag from a distance, and as a result, this idea got viral. That's why now we often have flags with stripes or crosses rather than complex images. Sure, there are exceptions, but a general trend. In Europe, the first national flags were created in the Middle Ages. Many of the leaders of that time adopted the flags of their patron saint to represent their country. The most famous of them all is probably this flag. That's right the flag of the Republic of Genoa, 
It is known as the Cross of St. George, the military saint often depicted as a crusader. He was also the saint of the Kingdom of Georgia and about the same time became the saint of the Republic of Genoa. But if you think this flag looks familiar, it's because it's the modern day flag of England that was copied from the Genoese flag during the first crusade in 1195. Now, there are historians who have pointed at the lack of evidence that the Genoese flag had any relationship to the English one. So according to them, these two flags look similar and have similar name, the Cross of St. George, but it's just a pure coincidence. Anyhow, the reason I said that the Cross of St. George is the most famous is because of English and then British colonial rule, where the Union Jack was a part of a flag of this many places, and that's not even the full list. The crazy part is, some countries still have their national flag with Union Jack in the corner, even after they gained independence. For example, this is the modern day national flag of Australia, flag of Fiji, flag of New Zealand. This could have been the fate of a Jamaican flag too, but not only it doesn't have a Union Jack, Jamaica's national flag is currently the only national flag in the world that does not contain a shade of colors red, blue, or even white. So how did that happen? The national flag of Jamaica was adopted on 6th of August 1962. The flag consists of a gold saltire, which divides the flag into four sections, two of them green, the other two black. An earlier interpretation of the colors was, hardships there are, but the land is green and the sun shines. But this was changed in 1996 to black representing the strength and creativity of the people, which has allowed them to overcome difficulties. Gold for the wealth of the country and the golden sunshine, and green for the lush vegetation of the island, as well as hope. When we look at the combination of colors and the actual design, Jamaica's flag is one of the most original flags ever created. It's simply impossible to confuse this flag with any other one. This is especially interesting if we remember the story of how the flag was created. Originally, Jamaica's proposed flag was to be blue with Union Jack in the corner. Jamaicans kindly refused that proposition and at the end of September 1961, the decision was made to hold a competition for the selection of national anthem and national flag for independent Jamaica. The reward of £100 was to be paid for the accepted design of national flag. 368 entries were received, and here you can see a few examples. Several more original submissions are available in the special collections of the National Library of Jamaica. Once these were submitted, the Independence Celebrations Committee complied a short list of 12 designs to be selected from the Joint Committee of Parliament. However, none of the entries were found to be suitable. The flag was eventually designed by a bipartisan committee of the Jamaican House of Representatives, and here it is. This is the design that got approved. That's right, it featured horizontal stripes. But very soon it turned out it was too close in the resemblance to the flag of recently independent Tanganyika, which looked like this. Tanganyika used their flag only until 1964 when it became Tanzania and it now has a different flag. But at that time, Jamaica had to do something with the stripes and the perfect option was finally found and this is how the national flag of Jamaica was born as we know it today. There is no official record as to who specifically recommended this design, but there are different speculations, especially about Scottish influence, because the only other national flag in the world that has a saltire is this flag of Scotland with the cross of St. Andrew. But unfortunately, there is no written proof or any of that information. What we do know, however, is where the colors come from. Obviously, the colors and designs of national flags are not just randomly selected, but rather stem from history, culture, or religion of a certain country. Many flags can be traced to common origin, and such flag families are often linked both by common traditions or by geography. The colors of Jamaican national flag are strongly linked to the colors of flags that originate in Africa. 
namely South Africa. This is the flag of African National Congress and the same colors, not a coincidence. The African National Congress is a social democratic political party in South Africa that was founded in 1912. Its primary mission was to bring all Africans together as one people, to defend their rights and freedoms. It was the oldest black African political movement and regarded as the senior liberation movement in Africa. What's interesting is that it was also the time of the Pan-African movement that was started by Marcus Garvey, who is a Jamaican national hero in 1920, Marcus Garvey was the person who designed the Pan-African flag that is also known as Black Liberation Flag. It was that flag and its colors that influenced a lot of African states. We can see this reflected in the modern flags as well, like Kenya, Malawi, Angola or South Sudan. South Africa was also influenced by the ideas of Marcus Garvey and in 1925, African National Congress decided to choose a flag for themselves to represent the liberation movement. These were the colors they chose with the following meaning. Black symbolizes the native people of Africa, green represents the land, and gold represents the mineral and other natural wealth of South Africa. At least three other neighboring countries adopted the ANC colors for their own use. So we see the flags of Mozambique, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe all containing the colors black, green, and gold. Now to 1960s in Jamaica. The colors black, green, and gold were proposed by the members of Flag Committee in Jamaica, who supported the Pan-African movement and the liberation movement in Africa. And they chose these colors because of that exact reason. As a result, this was how one of the most unique flags was created, the national flag of Jamaica. Apart from the national flag, each country would usually have many other flags used by the government. And Jamaica is not an exception. If you've never been to the army, you might think that the national flag of Jamaica is the one to be used when Jamaica takes part in a military activity. Because after all, flags were originally designed for military purposes. But then you see this situation. And okay, this is the red circle and the crown, but what is the other green flag? Oh, here is a photo of the chief of defense staff in Jamaica. And along with the national flag, we see another flag with gray and dark blue colors and stars at the background. What is going on? Well, these are military flags and there are quite a few of them. First, we have the main military flag with inscription Defense Force and the coat of arms in the middle. You can see this badge on the official website of Jamaica's Defense Force. There is also a second flag for the chief of defense stuff, which looks like this. And this is exactly the flag at the background of that photo. Then there is Jamaica Regiment, which is the main component of the Jamaica Defense Force. There are three battalions that carry two colors each because of the British tradition. The Queen's color is the national flag with a central red circle and the battalion number in the middle of the circle. The regimental color consists of the same circle name and crown, but inside the circle is the regimental badge, which is a crocodile. There are also simplified versions of regiment flags for everyday use that look like this, and separate flags for engineer regiment and support and service battalion. So in total, we get 13 flags for Jamaica Defense Force. By the way, the crocodile is a prominent element in the coat of arms of Jamaica. It is indigenous to Jamaica and represents the strength and aggression required of an armed force. And that's why it makes total sense when it's on all the military flags. What doesn't make much sense for some people, however, is that unlike with national flag of Jamaica, the symbolism of military flags of Jamaica is still closely related to the UK. St. Edward's crown that is used as a symbol of royal authority in the Commonwealth realms, the Tudor rose, sometimes called the English rose, and so on. Now, the reason for that is because Jamaica, although completely independent and run by its own government, is a member of the British Commonwealth, which is now called the Commonwealth of Nations. It is said to be a voluntary association of 54 sovereign states, and Jamaica is one of them. This video is about flags, but when I see all this symbolism, the question I ask 
is a very practical one. What kind of benefits does Jamaica get from being a part of the Commonwealth? And what are the costs? It will take me some time to do proper investigation on the subject to put it into a video. And I have some other videos lined up already, but I'm definitely going to cover the topic of the Commonwealth and Jamaica. So if you're interested to dig deep into that, don't forget to check your bell notification not to miss this episode when it comes out and subscribe. Now back to flags. A full description on symbolism of Jamaica military flags can be found on Jamaica Defense Force website. There are also different departments of Jamaica Defense Force and many of them have their own flags. Jamaica doesn't have an air force as a separate unit. Instead, it has an air wing, which is a part of Jamaica Defense Force and was formed in early 1963. Later that year, Jamaica received four Cessna aircraft through a military assistance package from the US government. The flag for Jamaica Air Wing is blue with Jamaican national flag in the corner and the budge of the armed forces in the fly end. Then there is a roundel and a fin flash represented by the national colors. Due to the mountainous nature of the island, it soon became apparent that helicopters would become a necessity for use by the Jamaica Defense Force and other government departments. This footage is a Jamaica Defense Force Air Wing running a rescue operation to evacuate a passenger on a merchant vessel who needed urgent medical help and was delivered by helicopter to University Hospital of West Indies. When it comes to maritime in general, and navy in particular, countries would usually have several types of flags. This is because vessels identify themselves according to what kind of ship they are, what they're doing. They can either use civil or merchant ensigns used by civilian vessels, or they can have what's known as naval ensigns used by military vessels. Sometimes these flags use like national flags with a few modification, like the British ensign, for example, but sometimes they will not have much in common. For instance, this is a national flag of Hungary, and this is Hungarian naval ensign. And Hungary doesn't even have the sea, it's a landlocked country. But there you go. Jamaica has a naval ensign, also known as the Coast Guard ensign, which obviously follows the British tradition common in many countries all across the world. Then again, this red cross of St. George that we see on a Jamaican naval flag, which is similar to the British naval flag, might as well be just a coincidence. The police of Jamaica has its own flag as well. They're known as the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and it is a department under the Ministry of National Security. This is their flag that is used on water vessels as well as on land. Jamaica Customs has its own flag with their agency budge in it. This flag is used by the Jamaican Olympic Association with the national coat of arms above the Olympic rings. The brightest Jamaican flag of them all is, of course, the flag of Jamaica Fire Brigade. And if you've never seen it, next time you see the fire truck, check out the prints on their doors. All of these flags represent agencies that are run by Jamaican government. Of course, there are other government agencies, but not all of them have flags as such. The ones that do, I've listed here. Next time you see them, you will know exactly what they represent. And of course, there are three personal flags in Jamaica. One is the flag of the Queen. This is Her Majesty's personal flag for Jamaica. Another personal flag is the flag of the Governor General of Jamaica. And the Prime Minister of Jamaica has his own flag as well. It is important to note here that usually every single region of a country would have their own flag known as regional flag. It can be like for province, county, district, town and so on. In Jamaica, the only place that has its own flag is Kingston and St. Andrew area. And it's not really the flag for the place is municipal corporation flag. I saw that flag before during the talks of government officials and I couldn't understand what the flag was. So I decided to include it here for other people to avoid confusion. 
To finish off this episode, I would like to bring your attention to another flag you can often see all across Jamaica. Even though it's not registered as a government flag, quite a lot of people outside of Jamaica tend to associate it with Jamaica as a country. This flag is currently viewed as the flag of Rastafari movement. Its name, the Ethiopian Line of Judah flag. And it was actually used as the national flag of Ethiopia between these years. It's not a national flag of Jamaica, and the reason I'm saying that is because I met people who thought it was. However, this flag is indeed very important with Rastafari movement, and of course there is a strong connection between Jamaica and Ethiopia. This is a subject for an entirely different video, but I couldn't make a, an episode about flags used in Jamaica and not mention such an important flag. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you enjoy my work on YouTube, please consider supporting this project on Patreon from only five US dollars per month. And the special thanks to our top tier patrons for their continued support. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.